let's move on to main topic number one. And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Eliezer, who writes, Hi, John and friends. Have you heard? The rules upcoming Academy Awards have temporarily changed to accept movies that go straight to streaming and VOD. Thank you and everyone stay safe. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And yeah, we've been talking for a little while about how the Academy mentioned a number of weeks ago that they understand that in this really different, unique, unprecedented and challenging year that they were going to have to be a little bit flexible with what their normal rules are coming into whatever the next Academy Awards are if there's the next Academy Awards, but they're gonna have to be a little bit more flexible. Well, they just came out and announced a couple of very concrete changes. One has to do with the lockdown. One kind of doesn't. And let's take a look at this here. This comes to us from Deadline. Eligibility rules, now get this, streaming films can now be eligible for Oscars. Eligibility rules for films opening on streaming services and video on demand are being, this is important, temporarily altered to allow those films to qualify even if not first appearing with the standard seven-day theatrical qualifying run or day and date. To be eligible for this year's Oscar race, however, films will have to qualify by being made available on the Academy's exclusive streaming site within 60 days of, of streamer or VOD release and must have been previously, this is important, must have been previously intended for theatrical release. So the first big main thing we're looking at here is the fact that you now can, unlike other years, if your movie goes straight to VOD, it can still actually qualify for the Academy Awards. Normally, there's a certain window that you have to play in a theater for the public in Los Angeles, New York, and you got it. There's a few bunch of different rules you have to do in order to qualify. That obviously isn't available to a number of films because of what's going on in the world. So for this year, temporarily, they're saying for this Oscars, we're not going to make you kind of meet that eligibility requirement. Great. However, they are still very specific in pointing out the fact that your movie must have been intended for theatrical release. Like if you were making some little movie like I am that was never intended for theatrical release, well then no, we're not suddenly going to say it's eligible. But if you have a movie and you did have plans for a theatrical release and you had to go straight to VOD because there's no theaters open, we understand. No problem. That works. Don't worry about it. So all good. Sounds great. It's actually a good move on that, on their part. Now, the second thing is also pretty interesting. They have decided to combine two of the Oscar categories into one Oscar, Oscar category, and that is the categories of sound. Now, there have forever been two different sound categories, sound mixing and sound editing, and they really are two very different things. However, the Academy has decided to combine them into one. Now, the Academy was quick to point out that we didn't do this because we're trying to save time in the Oscar broadcast. They said our actual, the sound branch of the Academy came forward and said, we think we would like to combine these into one overall category, best sound, period. So moving forward, and this one isn't temporary, there's only going to be one best sound category at the Academy Awards instead of two separate categories for editing and mixing. I find that very interesting, and I understand the logic behind it, even though I like having two separate ones. Aaron. Yes. You know, the Academy is something, the Academy Awards are something to me that is my second favorite, my favorite day of the year is Christmas. My second favorite day of the year is the Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. I, I love the Oscars and I'm always fascinated by the rules and changes. To me, this seems like a common sense approach for the Academy to take for at least this year. What do you think about their move on this part? Do you think they'll actually keep it temporary? And was this enough of an adjustment for this year? Or do you think there's more work to be done for an upcoming Oscars if there is an upcoming Oscars this year? Well, I, I was shocked when I read that initially. But of course, after I got over my initial, oh my goodness, that's that is definitely a sign of the times. Um, it it absolutely makes the most sense there because uh, uh, otherwise, not only would there possibly not even be able to be any Academy Awards next year, um, 
I fe- I was wondering, okay, well, if you are actually someone, if you're a film that's in contention for 2020 Oscar race, do you almost feel like this is one of those off years? Like, um, I won't say who, but there's a certain actress that when she won Best Actress, everybody was like, well, yeah, but if, I mean, look at the competition. There really wasn't. And, and that's sort of something that follows people sometimes is, um, you know, high competition year or a low competition year. Does that automatically qualify 2020 as a low competition year? Um, so to see that these films are still going to be able to be released, I think it's going to be a great test for the, you know, for our industry. We've seen certain things do not translate to uh, watching at home without a live audience. Wrestling, for example, <laughs> not the same without an audience. We have tested that. We now realize it is just weird to watch without an audience there. So I think this will be a really interesting test. I don't believe that this is going to be something that will stick in certain aspects. Maybe there might be certain uh, films that if they don't feel like they um, have the power or have the ability to be nominated for an award and don't want to go through all the PNA and all the 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 cost of putting their film in a theater, they might say, all right, moving forward, this is going to work just as fine. But I believe the um, president of the AM motion, um, AMPTS, whatever that acronym is, um, the <laughs> president of the motion picture association, I believe. The Academy of Motion Academy Pictures, of Arts, motion and Picture Arts and Sciences. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, said we, yeah, there was a quote, we believe that film was intended and should be viewed in a theater, which is its natural setting. Um, and we have no intention of continuing this beyond there. Like there was a great respect for the fact that films belong in theaters. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that for this year. Also, uh, the sound, I don't know enough about sound editing and sound mixing to say whether they should or they shouldn't. Um, I will say good for the sound people for making that decision for themselves because that means that I'm assuming everyone in the sound department wins the Academy Award, whereas previously it might have just been the people in the mixing that were doing the mixing and then the editors wouldn't. Yeah, they probably got tired every year because, I mean, we get every single year. People, like, questions, it doesn't matter how many times it's explained. What's the difference? What, you, yeah. what, what's the difference? I mean, so they probably yeah. got tired of it themselves. I asked, a, com- so a, com- one, one I asked a composer friend of mine, and I don't know if he just didn't feel like answering the question, but he was like, ah, oh, just kind of muttered some stuff about the Academy and them not respecting... So, sound I'll, I'll give you the, here's the best way to define it all right so sound editing and sound mixing here's the difference sound editing is coming up with the sounds you actually hear in the movie so what whatever like sound is in there and... well it's foley is part of it okay so you know as you hear somebody walking the the, the whatever sounds but also the various different types of sound effects that the kind of sound you're getting all that kind of stuff now mixing is then taking all the sound in the movie and mixing it together properly to have a really nice th- think of it in terms of a, of a band being in a studio you're mixing now all the instruments you're not in there playing the drums but you're now you're mixing it all to give the nice balance of it to make oh, sure I all see. the sounds come across blah, blah. so it's been so you're of- layering like the sound of the horse on the road with the sound of the war you- going on in the background with the sound of the traffic going by with the sound of oh, the, the characters singing. and finding the right levels to where you can still yeah. hear the words that the actors are that's saying that's an oversimplification I'm giving granted but it's just basically it. making the sounds, then mixing the sounds. But they see it as kind of an idea to to combine them in one. It's less confusing for a lot of people. It's probably not bad. So we ask you guys, what do you think about both of these moves on the Academy's part? Do you think this was the right decision to make for a year like this? Also, what do you think about them combining the sound categories into one single category? I, I kind of like the two different categories, but I think I, it's an understandable move. What do you guys think? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right.